More fun in AI video today. Higgs Field has rolled out a sketch to video feature for Sora 2. It's interesting. It does have some limitations and some workarounds. Uh, we'll go over all of that today. Plus, infinitely long Sora 2 and Kling outputs. Well, there's an agent for that. Really fascinating workflow here and one that I think is poised to be a big shakeup in the AI video world. All that plus camera and motion control from one still image. This one is still in alpha, but I think you guys are gonna be interested in checking it out. Kicking off, Higgsfield have recently rolled out a new feature for Sora 2 on the Higgsfield platform, obviously called Sketch to Video. In principle, it's sort of in line with the storyboard technique I went over a few videos back, but uh, here we have the added bonus that you can kind of MS Paint your own images. So how does it work? How does it hold up? And how far can we push it? Well, a uh, friend of the channel, D Studio Project. I'm not sure if this is his or not. He did post this. Uh, that you know, obviously we have four you know very very basically drawn images here, um, and then running this through the, the Higgsfield Sora sketch to video. A good reminder that no matter how sharp your blade, everyone poops. So with sketch to video, we have obviously a very basic kind of, uh, you know, drawing canvas here. All the typical tools, your pencil tool, your eraser tool, uh, a couple of different colors here as well. Um, and the ability to upload images as well. We'll take a look at that in a little bit. But in the meantime, you know, suffering my stick figures here, uh, you can also add in a, a prompt essentially just, you know, with the text tool here. Uh, so in this case, it's just man talking to a woman with red hair in a park. Uh, he's upset that she just spoiled the ending of the TV show lost are you kidding me right now you just told me the entire ending it's been off the air for what 15 years i thought everyone knew by now i was finally watching it six seasons in and you dropped the big twist like it's nothing sorry i guess but hey it's still about the journey right unbelievable to be honest this guy should be thanking her for all the time she just saved him but uh you know overall you know, it, this definitely works all of the shots from our storyboard are present and accounted for i will note that sora did take it upon itself to revert back to the two shot for uh the final shot but uh, it also kind of works. So having established that it does indeed work, I decided to start moving it up the ladder to see how far we could push things. Uh, if you remember a while back, we took a look at a platform called Rubber Band, where you could upload uh, a story, like a screenplay, and it would generate storyboards for you. Um, so coming back to, what, what did we name this one? This one was like the Shadows of Ashenmore or something like that. Uh, the Shadow of Ashenmore, indeed. Um, this was like a, you know, a very Game of Thronesy type script that, uh, well, ChatGPT wrote for me. And then we had some storyboards generated for it. So grabbing these and our script, I was curious to see how far we would get with a layout like this. You know, obviously each of our storyboard shots followed by uh, either, you know, description lines or dialogue lines. Uh, the results. Majesty, your enemies draw near. The walls will not hold without my gift. No wall built by blood and lies will stand, wizard. Yet walls of steel have failed you, knight. Ashenmore burns on your watch. Enough. So yeah, a bit of a mess. I will give it credit. It did get all of the dialogue in there, uh, but you know, obviously it maintained that kind of like storyboard look uh, and uh, on top of it, you know, obviously the physics were a bit of a mess. Although I don't know, our guy is a wizard. So maybe Sora just decided to have him floating around the room. Undeterred by that, I thought I'd take the experiment over to the Sora mothership. You know, the one that uh, we're paying $200 and still getting watermarks for. What's the deal, Sam? Uh, anyhow, so running the exact same thing uh, on the Sora platform yielded this. Majesty, your enemies draw near. The walls will not hold without my gift. No wall built by blood and lies will stand, wizard. Yet walls of steel have failed you, knight. So again, similar results, although it did get me thinking, uh, what do we have on the Sora platform that doesn't exist anywhere else? cameos so uh yeah running the entire thing again and just throwing in a cameo of myself majesty your enemies draw near the walls will not hold without my gift no wall built by blood and lies will stand wizard yet walls of steel have failed you knight ashenmore burns on your watch and that is what I was looking for. Now, there are still some issues here. 
for one. Sora does kind of jumble all of the dialogue lines together. It doesn't know who is saying what. Uh, secondly, and this, this isn't that big a deal to me, but the uh, my cameo as the Dark Wizard uh, doesn't really look like me, but that does seem to be the thing that triggers that cinematic look. Friend of the channel, Brent Lynch, ran a similar experiment utilizing this as uh, storyboards and was initially running across outputs like this, very similar to uh, the storyboard ones from earlier, you know, just kind of a mess. But after trying it out with some random cameos, uh, the results ended up like this. No. And that obviously looks significantly better than like the weird animatics that we were getting. Uh, by the way, if you are anyone that uh, randomly were cameoed in these videos, Brent does apologize. It was totally random. Uh, so uh, it's nothing creepy or weird. Uh, it was done in the name of science. By the way, I did just want to share this version. Uh, Mark Cuban uh, released his cameo uh, to everyone. Uh, so this is again, that same output uh, only with Mark Cuban. Hello? Anybody here? <laughs> what was that? Oh no, stay back! <sighs> Need to get out of here, costplusdrugs.com. And if you didn't catch that at the end, it's uh, costplusdrugs.com, which is one of Mark Cuban's businesses. Apparently, uh, every time you use his cameo, his cameo will give a commercial to that business. It's kind of brilliant. So moving back over to the Higgs field side. Uh, yeah, this experiment, I, I was tending to dead end a lot. Either, you know, I would end up with straight storyboard type uh, outputs or I was getting uh, moderation kickback uh, essentially for, you know, generating real people, uh, despite the fact that they were sketches. So I decided to simplify things down a pretty considerable amount. Uh, now going with kind of an interrogation scene, I began uh, generating this image up and then utilizing C-Dance, I uh, got close-ups of each character. Uh, now, now writing this one. We know you were there that night. Your phone pinged right at the scene. I lost my phone that night. Didn't even have it on me. Hmm. So you didn't post a TikTok video standing over the victim? And again, we ended up stylistically locked into our reference. Now, there, there was the one weird cut in there. I, I'm sure you guys all caught that, but I do have to shout out the uncalled POV shot of the phone. That's actually very nice. But again, taking that same image and once again, adding in a cameo of myself as the detective and a friend of the channel, Dave Clark, as the uh, TikTok and suspect uh, yielded this. We know you were there that night. Ping from your cell phone put you right at the scene. I lost my phone that night. Didn't even have it on me. So you didn't post a TikTok video standing over the victim? Because this says otherwise. Why not? So again, I do think that providing cameos is the thing that triggers that cinematic look. Uh, that said, you gotta deal with the stupid watermarks. But I was not about to give up on Higgsfield that easily. So uh, I ended up taking our uh, images and then bringing them back over to Nano Banana uh, to create uh, stick figure <laughs> versions of them. Um, and uh, along with that, I ended up giving it the prompt of uh, the style that I was looking for. So cinematic crime film and then all of your various, uh, you know, diffusion, uh, lens callouts, et cetera. Uh, and the results. We know you were there that night. Ping from your cell puts you right at the scene. I lost my phone that night. Didn't even have it on me. Hmm. So you didn't post a TikTok video standing over the victim. So yeah, that finally worked. Now granted, again, three seconds shorter than the uh, Sora platform output, but no watermarks. So if you're gonna give this feature a shot over on Higgsfield, uh, oddly, I'd have to say that the worse you are at drawing, the better off you are, uh, but it does work but definitely do provide written text instructions on your sketch as well. Sliding over to infinitely long Sora 2 and Kling 2.5 outputs. Now, I do wanna preface this. Um, this definitely falls under the category of experimental, but Fabian over at Glyph has been doing some pretty interesting stuff with uh, Sora, Kling, and Nano Banana, uh, and well, essentially everything else that's available. Uh, Glyph, if you're not aware, uh, is a spot where you can kind of build your own agents and workflows. I have covered them in the past, but lately, I mean, they have been really pushing the envelope. Um, you can, of course, create your own agent. We're not gonna get into that part of it right now. 
Instead, we're going to focus on a pre-built workflow that you can use. Uh, we'll, we'll kick it off with the Infinite Sora one, uh, which essentially is, uh, you know, a chat agent. It's powered by Claude uh, and then has access to just a, like a number of tools. So before we jump into how it works, let's take a quick look at a piece that I, I cribbed together with it. Uh, I did go with sort of an anime-ish style only because that I just wanted to totally bypass that whole like Sora realistic people thing. Here we go. <laughs> Whoa, this feels so fast. Left turn. Ah, breeze feels awesome. Now, while there are some problems with that, now admittedly a bit of a softball in terms of like a storyline, you know, kid getting out of school, going home. Um, I will say that this is the first time that I've kind of utilized one of these agentic workflows uh, where it actually felt right. We sort of ran through the idea and it was able to generate up a shot list. Uh, and then from there, I did generate up a stylistic reference and ended up utilizing C Dream for that. From there, we, we basically just started generating up our shots. Uh, the one plus side I was able to, you know, again, you're sort of having a conversation and it occurred to me that chances are uh, the character would probably change between generations. So I did end up having it generate up a character sheet for our main character. And then from there, we just started moving through the shots. Not every shot was perfect. I think it was like the third shot uh, ended up yielding this, which I did not love. So I was able to direct it with the simple, like, don't love that. He seems very lightly animated and got the very typical LLM response of, you're absolutely right. Uh, but, you know, after another generation, it, it did kind of end up with the shot that I wanted. But ultimately, the thing that ended up kind of selling me on this, as opposed to other like agentic e workflows that I've seen in the past, you know, the ones that are like, uh, you know, prompt and then will instantly make you a movie, which I, I, you, if you notice, I don't really cover those on the channel because I don't really believe in them. But this approach allows us to take a shot like shot number three, and then instantly that was supposed to jump into shot number four, which would have been a jump cut. Um, so, you know, I was just like, hey, we, we need uh, we, we need some kind of cutaway. Um, so I ended up having it generate up an aerial shot just to give us, you know, uh, essentially a bridge from one shot to the next. Um, that is what you need the human for. And then ultimately when you have all of your shots together, you can simply ask it to, you know, stitch all of your clips together. Actually a funny thing happened here uh, in that we were having some problems with this uh, generation and in particular, uh, it just kept timing out. Um, so when I asked it to uh, just bring it all together, it was like, no, nah, let me do shot six first. <laughs> to its credit, it actually did nail it and then exported everything together. So, you know, there is that. Now, a couple of things to be aware of. Uh, first and foremost, this can be a bit of a credit burner, so uh, just keep that in mind. Secondly, each of the clips that generates does run uh, you know, the full five seconds. So um, what we're looking at up here, that's actually the full generation as it was all stitched together. So that runs, uh, what is it, uh, 56 seconds. Um, so after I ended up cutting some stuff out, our final piece actually ran 25 seconds. That's just like trimming everything up. So uh, yeah, you will end up having to trim things out. Sound is also kind of a mess. So you'll you'll have to go through and do some cleanup there. Uh, and then at least on the Sora side, I would not recommend it for any kind of like cinematic or realistic type stuff. Once again, Sora does not like doing that. Um, so um, like I, I had a kind of a Twin Peaks-ish one. It, it did some pretty interesting stuff here, or at least tried to do some workarounds uh, where, you know, when we were running into issues with, um, you know, images with characters in it, uh, it was like, hey, oh, well, let's just do a location and add characters in afterwards. I was like, that's a pretty good idea, Glyph. I, I use that trick all the time too. Um, unfortunately, it, it did not really end up, um, you know, leading down a fruitful path for either of us. And at some point we actually started getting generations with people. I was like, hey, wait a minute, how, how'd that happen? I was like, did you switch over to Kling? Uh, and it was like, oh yeah, I totally switched over to Kling. That was, that was the best way to get it to work. So this one ended up being a bit of a mess, but I think that's mostly because I was trying to generate Kling uh, within the Sora glyph. Um, you can see, I mean, it definitely works. We, we, again, it was just a lot of headaches to get here. Um, so uh, if you want to use the Kling version, there is an entirely separate Kling 2.5 glyph um, that I, it, I think it actually, this does a really great job of taking like two first frame last frames and combining them together pretty seamlessly. I believe it uses FFmpeg for that. Um, yeah, very handy. Overall, I have to say, I, I personally have not been very bullish on 
like agentic video workflows, mostly because they're always posed as being some kind of like one shot solution, which they never are. And look, while you're still going to end up arguing a lot with the uh, Claude Glyph, um, I will say this is, again, this is the first time that I've actually played with it uh, and felt like it's like, oh, it's like having a really fresh green intern um, that is very eager to work with you, but also needs a very close eye kept on them or they're going to make a mess. I know that there are a few other platforms that are gearing up for agentic workflows, so this is definitely not the last time uh, that you are going to be seeing this. Uh, still, if you want to give it a shot in advance, uh, the link to Glyph is down below. Moving on, I did just kind of quickly want to update everyone on uh, Kinetics, who I have been covering uh, essentially since they uh, they surfaced. Now, I do want to note that Kinetics is still in alpha. It's not even in beta yet. Uh, but again, uh, they just released an update to their Mocha 1 model. And uh, yeah, I just wanted to show you guys where it was because I'm genuinely pretty excited about this. So at its core, what you can do with Kinetics is take uh, you know any source of video and then apply that to a still image. And well, you get, you know, you get the motion, um, but they've recently added in uh, camera movement as well. And overall, it, yeah, I mean, it's actually looking pretty good. A recent test that I ran really impressed me taking our character uh, that we used in the like the micro short uh, film alarm uh, a few videos ago and then applying, uh, you know, just this uh, preset to it, just having her stand up and then adding in a arc, um, 45 degree arc to the left. Um, yeah, I mean, that looks pretty good. It does also hold stylization pretty well, taking this uh, stock video uh, and then applying that to this image, uh, we end up with this as an output. And again, look, I know it's not perfect, but they're still an alpha. Uh, the things that impress me here are the fact that we're, we're getting locations in this room that uh, you know the model was not aware of previous to that. Uh, and then uh, in, the other thing that kind of impresses me here is the footwork on our animated character, considering that that information does not exist in the stock video as well. So again, they are still in alpha. I will be keeping an eye on them. I will definitely let you know as things progress. Uh, I'll have a link down below to sign up for the waitlist or early access uh, if you'd like to test it out and provide feedback as well. So I guess that's it for today. I know that everyone's still like anxiously awaiting the VO 3.1 drop, uh, which uh, should be happening fairly soon. Uh, chances are as soon as I upload this video, of course, it'll probably happen. So uh, I will definitely be seeing you again very soon. As always, I thank you for watching. My name is Tim.